Hi everyone, Susan Elias here. First, I want to thank you all for supporting my channel as it's growing. And I thank you for all your likes, your subscriptions, and your great comments. So keep it coming. Shortly, I'm going to be developing a little bit of a school that will be online. But right now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a teaser on how to dart manipulation with a sloper. And here we go. Okay, first I want to show you um, what the paper block pattern looks like and how it forms the body. I have my mannequin right here, as you can see, and I have the sloper. This is a bodice for the front, and it doesn't have any seam allowances. That makes it a sloper. When you add seam allowance, it then becomes a pattern. And if I put this sloper onto my, my bodice of my front of my mannequin, and I show you closing this dart, you can see that it'll fit this body 3D. Now I'm going to show you the sketches. I drew three sketches of different locations for a one dart on the bodice. First I have it at the shoulder, then I have it at the French dart, and then I have one at the neckline. These are three basic movements of where to put the dart, a basic one dart sloper, and make a pattern. So let's get started. Okay, here I am with the supplies you're going to need in order to get started with this project. First, I have the paper underneath here. This is pattern making paper. If you don't have the dotted paper, you can just use brown paper or plain white paper that you use for wrapping packages. I have pencils here sharpened. I have a paper scissor. I have a special long prong tracing wheel that goes through everything. I have little tacks, an eraser. This is the French curve, the straight ruler, the hip curve, and my tape measure that's always around my neck. So let's get started. Okay, here I am with my sloper. I've put the different dart points for manipulation in black marker, and I put up a couple of other indications I want you to understand. This is your basic bodice sloper. Here is the center front, and you will see a CF, which indicates that. This is the neckline, this is the shoulder, this is the armhole, this is the side seam, and then this is the waist, and this is your waist dart. Here in the center of all these lines is what's called the apex. That's the center point of the bus point. And these are all just different dart manipulation locations that are basic. We have one here for the center, as far as the center front, and then another one here. We have one at the neckline. We have the center of the shoulder. We have the shoulder tip. We have the armhole. We have straight dart for the bodice, as well as the straight here in the center front. And we have the typical French dart. And I'm going to show you how to move this dart over to the shoulder. And let's get started. Okay, the first thing you want to do at this point is we're going to draw the center front lines. So I'm going to take any of these markings here and I'm going to follow them and give you a straight line with my pencil and my ruler like that. That's going to be my center front line. I'm going to put my center front of my bodice onto that line like that. I'm going to put a pin at the apex. I'm also going to put pins, push pins in different locations just to hold it down for you. Let's get, let's get this right here, just to hold it down where it needs to be. Now, typically, what you want to do, if I'm going to be moving this dart to this location, is we're going to go towards the center front, around as far as tracing it. There are some exceptions, but in this case, we're going towards the center front. So you can see I have a little A here. I'm not sure if you can see, and I have a little B here. This kind of makes it easy to understand closing it. I'm going to start at the edge of this one dart, and I'm going to trace all the way around the center front, and this is already traced as you can see. I'm going to trace around the neckline, and I'm going to stop right here at the shoulder dart, where, I, where the opening is going to be. I'm going to stop right there. At this point, I'm going to take these push pins out, and I'm going to move B to meet A. I'm going to pivot my pattern so that this part here hits the closure of this dart. Now we've successfully closed that one dart. I'm going to push pin this down like this, 
Let's get this push pinned. And then from there, I'm going to start even at the top here of the other part of the dart. And I'm going to put like a little indication like that. And I'm going to trace around the other part of the pattern that has not been traced yet. The armhole, the side seams. And I'm going to go all the way to the end of this one where the B is. Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to take the push pins out just like that, remove the pattern, and now you have a closed dart here. And you've got the center front and you've got the side seam and this big space right here. So from here to here, with this apex, which is like the center of the bus point, we have to do that one first, I'm going to draw two lines. The opening end of this line will start at the edge right here to the apex, and then the opening edge of this part to the apex as well. Now we've successfully moved this dart all the way around to the center of this shoulder. And we have a big dart here. And the reason why it's bigger is because this span is longer than this span. So that makes it a larger dart. Okay, before I cut this and close it, let me explain a few things. This is going to end, this dart is going to end at the apex. You never ever want a dart to finish at the apex. It's always going to be a little bit further away from the apex to give a nice space for the curve of the bust to happen. And usually it's in something this large, I would go as far as an inch to an inch and a quarter. So I'm going to go an inch and a quarter from this apex to the center of this dart and make a new what's called a dart point. It needs to be in the center of this space. At that point, I'm going to make new lines for the dart legs. I'm going to draw again from this edge here to the new dart point. That's the dart. This is apex here. This is dart point here. And I'm going to draw the other leg of the dart to the dart point like that. So that's where this is going to actually end up when it's finished. Then we can put seam allowance on this and I can show you how to, that is closed and cupped. And here we go. So I'm parallel making a line from the center front half an inch out. At the neckline, we usually give it a quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to make little parallel markings, a quarter of an inch to give me an indication to where I'm going to need to cut. And here we go all the way around the neckline. We're going to give it here on the shoulder as well as this side of the shoulder. And like I always tell my students, you want to do a half moon. So just draw a half moon. I'll explain that later. Now we're here at the armhole. It's usually a half of an inch as well. So I'm going to make little indications for me to where I'm going to have a guideline to cut all the way around the armhole like this. If you make the indications close enough, you probably can just use those indications for a cutting line. If they're not, you will then have to use one of your rulers to give you a cutting line. Here on the side, I'm going to give it a half of an inch as well, all the way down. Here at the waist, it has a half of an inch as well. So I'm just making little parallel lines and markings to indicate where my cutting line is going to be. At this point is when you can start to use your French curve or your hip curve if you want to make a, a little bit of a, a line that is more visible for you to see as far as your cutting line. It's um, important to have a nice cutting line because if that's off in any way, it can increase or decrease the size of your pattern. So now I'm going to take my paper scissors, as you can see here, and I'm going to cut all the way around at the seam allowance line, not the seam line. This is the seam line. This is the seam allowance where order, in order to sew this garment together, you need a little bit of an allowance, and that's what this is. I'm going to cut that out my quarter of an inch seam allowance like this going up and I'm also going to cut my half moon and I'll explain why you need that later but I'm going to cut that around cut my shoulders the waist we're still cutting on the seam allowance line or what's considered the cutting line 
And here I am on the side seams, cutting all the excess paper. And now we're at the armhole. This is just a basic sloper. This is just one dark manipulation, like I said. You can do two, three, on all kinds. So here we have the shape, as you can see, and we are ready to close this dart to what's called truing this dart. And the reason why you need all this space here, as you can see, is because this dart will kind of make this weird shape sticking out like that in a minute. The first thing you want to do is from this line to this line, you want to take it and fold it back like this. So we have this line folded back. If you can see that, that is not the original line, it's my new dart line. And once you have that, you can either put a push pin or a pencil. I like to use my fingers a lot and I concave it. So see how this is now turning 3D? I'm gonna move this dart line to this dart line right there and I'm gonna close it just like that. And as I close it, the dart excess is going towards the center front. Very important to know. There are different ways you can do this. I like to use the tracing wheel and I'm gonna go and trace actually at the seam line not the cutting line, and trace straight like that. Once I do that, you will see that it turns into like little pyramid shape here, right here. That's what you have to follow on the seam allowance because that extra fabric, paper, whatever you want to call it, is going to be needed in order to hide underneath the dart. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out my cutting line on that and I'm going to go ahead and cut on the cutting line just like that and now you have the dart has moved and you've got a pattern piece this is no longer considered a block it is considered a pattern piece because you have seam allowance. Here's your new dart. It, when you close it, as you can see like this, let me do it the other way. All right, so when you see that now, you can see as I close this dart like this, it makes the shape of the body. And we now have the dart here on the shoulder instead of the waist. And that's how you do a simple dart manipulation on flat pattern with your block. Thank you for watching again, and, and please subscribe to my channel, like this if you like it, share it with your friends, and ask me a question, because you know I'm gonna answer it. Thank you, bye-bye.